far. So Kevin and I met randomly at um, Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins about three, four weeks ago. And um, I sort of, I'm sort of a bit of a believer in fate of these things as well, because, you know, you kind of, I've met some great people at these, these different events and I've ended up, you know, becoming good friends with them. So, you know, likewise, we just kind of hit it off. And um, I asked Kevin a couple of things about why he was there. And we were sitting, you know, without sort of bragging about it, we were sitting in the good seats, weren't we, Kev? <laughs> we, we were, we were. It was a, I love that diamond area. <laughs> Yeah, we're in the diamond area, so, you know, don't, don't ask about that, but it's a better bit. You get to be a bit closer to Tony. Anyway, um, so so I was just talking to Kevin. I asked him kind of, you know, why was he there and all these sort of things. So I think it'd be interesting if you can kind of share a little bit of your your story with us today, Kev. I know a lot of the guys who are listening to the episode kind of get a heap out of what I call the entrepreneurial journey. So if you go back a bit and say kind of where you were a couple of years ago, what changed, what you do now, I think that would be really valuable to people. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So for myself, it's been a bit of a crazy roller coaster this last four to five years. Um, I was an electrical engineer going into 2015. And um, that was my ambition in, in life at the time. I was coming out of school and I was thinking to myself, well, I like maths and I like electronics. And why don't I just become an electrical engineer? And electrical engineering that's a great um it's a great profession I could get myself a degree and that's that's exactly what I did I went to university for the eight years I studied and then what happened was I became an engineer at um 25 and my life wasn't as I thought it would be I was at work all the time I was getting called out every other night um, I'd have to work weekends and because I've got a small young family I was actually yeah. away from my family a lot and I'd be getting called out all the time and that's when that's when I thought like there's got to be something different there's got to be a different way of and I always had this ambition to start something on the side in terms of business and it was actually a funny story it was actually I was watching The Apprentice in <laughs> 2015 and there was an episode on The Apprentice that was basically it, the the challenge was something like uh, two teams have got five hundred pounds and with those five hundred pounds can go out there and just buy products and see if you could make more money and whoever comes back wins with the most money and that's what we did in the family we said right okay let's all have ten pounds and we'll go out there and we can see how much we can turn that ten pounds to and um, I ended up turning that ten pounds to about. 26 pounds because I went to a um a second hand shop called Sue Ryder here in the UK and yeah. I bought these I purchased these little porcelain birds and they were like one pound each and I thought these must be worth money because they're like really high quality they're like the, the painting was amazing uh there was signature and the dates on the on the on the bottom of them and I thought if I buy these for a pound surely I can sell these for more than a pound and um Lo and behold, I ended up selling them for like ten pounds, uh, eight pounds on eBay. Okay, so that's that's that was my first introduction. Is that, is that like, I mean, that's a, there's two parts to that which are amazing. The first, the first part is that you decided to go and actually take some action off the Apprentice. I mean, I, I I love that show, but the fact that you decided to have a bit of a game with the family is cool. And and then and then the fact that you saw some value in some little porcelain what birds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it yeah, the, it, it was. Yeah, it was. They were just. They just stood out to me. Like, surely they're worth something to somebody more than just one pound. Anyway, so I ended up selling them for more money on eBay, and I was. I, I won the challenge with the family. It was. It was great. I, I won it, and uh, that was the first. I guess it was a light bulb moment that I could find products to sell and sell them for more money. And uh, the issue that I had, unfortunately, at the time was. Um, I was working full time as an electrical engineer. So time was a real big problem for me because it was great that I sold these birds, but I had to go to the post office, get them all bubble wrapped, get them all shipped off to customers. So it wasn't scalable for me. And that was when I discovered Amazon FBA. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Amazon FBA, Nick, but um, basically what that means is you can... On this, let me... This. Sorry, Go on. No, I was going to say, just, just to jump in, because um, what's interesting about this is a lot of people have contacted me um, and they're, they're the very beginning, right? So my po podcast is Scale Up Your Business, but ultimately it's startups to scale up and all those different things. And a lot of people are saying, and this is kind of what I want to get into, because I think you're going to probably move into this next, is how can I create some more passive income? 
what's the strategy that I can, you know, build an online business, you know, Shopify, Amazon. And I, you know, I, I always sort of, I have no experience on that. So if you're going to talk about your journey, I think, I mean, it's, I mean, the number of people have asked me about this is huge. Yeah, absolutely. And th this is, this was something that I really needed. I needed a solution to, I can't be, I was at work and I was getting a sale through eBay and I got a notification on my phone and I was like, wow, this is amazing. But then after work, I'd have to go and get it all packaged up and go away uh, and get it sent away in on the post office. And that's when I, um, Amazon FBA was a solution to that because you could send all your products to Amazon and Amazon's fulfillment centers, FBA stands for fulfilled by Amazon. Right. Once you make, okay. yeah, once you once you make a sale, Amazon will actually go take your product, package it, ship it all off to the customer, and they take care of all customer service. They they have incredible amounts of traffic already on Amazon. So that that was a, a amazing moment for of discovery for me because, like that, then meant these ten porcelain birds that I had. If I found a hundred porcelain birds or a thousand porcelain birds, or if I just found any product that I could sell for more money, I could just ship it all to Amazon's fulfillment centers and they do billions every year. They've got all the, you know, they've got all the structure in place. They've got all the customer service in place. They've got everything there. And that's exactly what I did. Like we finished wow. this apprentice challenge. <laughs> And so, we finished I, I, there's I've a million questions. I don't want to kind of stop your flow too much. But this one thing. So so literally you, you can let's say I've got, I don't know, you said you've got hundred birds, thousand birds. All I've got to do is send them to firstly I've got to be signed up by Amazon, I assume. I have to apply to be a a, a, a seller, if you like. Is that right? And then and then you go through the process? Yes. You would need a you would need a, an Amazon seller central account to be able to uh, ship to Amazon's fulfillment centers in the first place. There are, there's two programs that they do. They do fulfilled by merchant, which basically means the same as eBay. If you make a sale, I would have to package it myself and, and ship it off to the customer. Or they do FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. So you could ship it off to Amazon and you could, when you get a sale, Amazon will ship it to the customer. So that's something that you would need. But the amazing thing about, the journey that happened was I started what I didn't know at the time was online arbitrage and online arbitrage basically means you are taking advantage of price differences from one marketplace to another. So I'll give you a really, I'll give you an example, a really straightforward example. If you, if you go to a, a petrol station down the, down the street, um, they are selling petrol at one price but then you go down the other side of the street and they've got another petrol station by another company and there's a difference in price, but it's the same product. Sure. So that's what arbitrage basically means. So I, I thought, right, if I could go to any store like a Sue Rider or like a an Argos or a Disney or it, it doesn't matter what store you go to, you can find a product, compare it from the retail store, online store to Amazon if there's a difference in price, and the amazing thing is about Amazon, Amazon will give you so much information about that specific product. They will tell you there's tools that you can use to analyze that particular item, how much it's sold in the past, and um, what the price average has been in the past. So you can see this particular item, let's say it's a, I don't know, a, a toy. My first product was a, a Monsters Inc. Sc Scully doll toy back in um, 2015, it's wow. uh, from Monst Monsters University. And I purchased those products for £12.50 from Tesco and I sold them on Amazon for £26 each. It was incredible. Um, and this that's what I've... I mean, you know, I've done this. this is, I'll tell you a really embarrassing story. Um, so I, I, when I used to do a lot of running, I had an addiction to running shoes. So my wife even bought me a shoe or made a shoe cupboard in our house where I have like literally 25, 30 pairs of running shoes. And of course, you only need you know, like one pair, don't you, to go running. But what I used to do is I used to get sick of them. And I would sometimes run in them once or twice and then put them on eBay. And a couple of times, I kid you not, I sold them for more than what I paid for them because I'd always buy them at a discount, like 15, 20% off. So in a very small way, I've seen this, but I haven't quite probably gone as all in as you have on this stuff. Yeah. And, and what you just mentioned there, that's a big part of it. So what you've just said there about the discounts, let's say, for example, a, a store online does a, a flash 
two for one sale or buy one, get one free or, or whatever. If you take advantage of that sale, you do the research on Amazon to see whether that, that particular item has got the demand, the sales are there, the price is there. Wow. You could take advantage of that price difference. So instead of paying, let's say, for example, this particular item goes from £20 to £10 because buy one, get one free, you purchase them at £10 and then you can sell it on Amazon for £20. So you're actually like taking advantage of this price difference. And it'd be amazing on how it's scalable because what we ended up doing was as soon as I discovered that this works, I was absolutely all in. And um, to the point now where we, we ended up quitting our jobs about six months later, we ended up selling, yeah, we ended up selling um, uh, over £150,000 in the first six months. Um, in the December, the first December of 2015, we actually sold over £36,000 worth of products, which was more than my annual salary of being an electrical engineer. And that was like, the light bulb moment to me I was like that's that was a crossroads where I was like I'm gonna go all in am I gonna go all in or do I have to am I going back to electrical engineering and that's when I, I went all in quit the job uh, we ended up getting out into a warehouse I've now got a full virtual team the the, the warehouse is is operating right now I've got a warehouse team in there and it, it's just been a crazy journey it's amazing so just just go back on the timeline again. And I, I agree, it's an amazing story, and <laughs> I can't believe how relevant this is to people who are listening to the podcast. It's like I mean, I'm going to get more people asking about this than anything else. I can tell you now. <laughs> but just give me the timeline again. So and the start. So obviously, electrical engineer wasn't fulfilled. <laughs> get all that. What did, did you did you go to UPW and then change your mindset around this, or did you start? How did, does that play into this at all? Uh, well, I'll, I'll share with you exactly the timeline. It was June 2015, I started. Yeah. Decem December of 2015, I handed my notice in, I quit my job. Then in the January of 2016, that is when I went really all in, in terms of building the team. So I had four virtual assistants sourcing for me every day at that point, sourcing products. I also had my first senior assistant. This was somebody that was helping me with the purchasing of products, the, anal uh, the analysis of different products. That was the January. Then it was the April of 2016. That is when I went to UPW because what happened was during that first sort of six to nine months, I started listening to the likes of Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn and yeah. uh, les brown and all these all these great people out there and um i just thought i, I need to i need to see tony robbins because i knew that tony robbins was mentored by jim Rohn, and yes. jim Rohn is, is one of my uh one of my all-time heroes up until this point because i was introduced to jim Rohn before tony robbins and yeah. um it was a crazy like for the first three months of listening to jim Rohn, i didn't even realize that he passed away like in 2009 so it was one of those like do you know when you just get that, yeah. oh, oh, I didn't realize that he passed away because I was going to go see Jim Rohn. I had to go see him. Do you know what I mean? Well, do you know what's <laughs> funny? I think, I mean, here you go. This is this is not even set up. See, look. <laughs> I know. That's so amazing. The Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness by Jim Rohn. In fact, it was one of the first books I ever read uh, before any of the Tony Robbins stuff. So there we are. <laughs> yeah that's it's, it's crazy so yeah that that was i was like right okay i've got to go see tony robbins i knew it was upw in the the april and i just went and it was such a that first upw definitely was something i needed because um when you first take the leap of faith into entrepreneurship and like I pretty much I'd worked eight years as an electrical engineer, studied, got my first class degree in engineering, and then I quit my job after like six months. So it was like I, I was all in and I knew that I had to keep developing myself and, and surrounding myself with people. And I knew people that invest in themselves to go to UPW because it's not cheap. Go to UPW. I knew there I would find people like in masterminds and I'll be able to connect with new people. And it was just great. I absolutely love that first UPW. Fantastic. Right, so, um, in, in terms of um, how you start doing this. So obviously, you know, you, you know, you mentioned before about you sign up with an Amazon account. Um, obviously there's a little bit of investment because you've got to buy stock. You've got to, I, I suppose, choose what stock you're buying. Did you, 
did you specialize or create a niche for yourself? How did, what was the first few things you did when you started? Um, yeah, so the first couple of steps that you will need is uh, understand on why it works, really. Being able to analyze items and products and why you would purchase them in the first place, because it's not it's 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 not something that you guess at. Like we use actual data to determine whether we are going to purchase this product or not. So every item that's available on Amazon, they have what they call a sales rank. And if you if you think of the this goes from number one to millions. Okay, everything that's ever sold on Amazon, it's got a sales rank. And number one would be the best selling product. So that's why you get the badge saying best seller. Okay, but you also get products that are like 10,000 and 100,000. And what basically happens is Amazon, they will rank every single product in terms of seller rank. And if that product makes a sale and if the rate of those sales increases, it will get closer and closer to that number one bestseller, okay? And there's tools out there that you can use to analyze every single item and you can see the history of the bestsellers rank. So you can see, we could go on any listing right now and, and we would be able to analyze that item to see, wow, this product has sold 10 times in the last month or it's sold 50 times in the last month. And then you're actually using real data. You're limiting your risk. It's not a case of... Okay. You're not just purchasing a hundred different items and just like hoping they would sell. You are strategically deciding what products you sell. So when I first started, you need an Amazon Sell Central account. You then need to learn why you would purchase a product in the first place by doing the analysis. And then what would happen is um, we started in toys and games to begin with. So we started to uh, just source for different products in toys and games. And there's different categories out on Amazon. So every time we wanted to expand, we expanded from toys and games to, let's say, health and personal care or beauty or groceries. And we were just opening different categories up as we wanted to expand. And now um, we, we basically have a virtual assistant in each category, just sourcing products all day, every day. Um, so that's what you would need. I would recommend you would need a, an Amazon Seller Central account Yep. Then do do some studying on why you would purchase a product in the first place. Because if I, I wouldn't want anybody to just start buying stuff and then wondering why it's not selling. Um, and I, I mean, there's lots of different content out there now where you could just go on YouTube, for example, and you could people out there that are sharing exactly what you need to look into. And then once you've done that, you could start purchasing products. Um, you could go to a, a retail we store. Yeah. We cut out, did we? Hold on one second. There we are. Let's come back a bit. I think the connection's looking a bit poor for a sec. Hold on. Okay, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. So um, you wouldn't want people to go out there and just buy some stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want people just to go out there and just and just buy some stuff and just throw it up. Um, it's it's really a case of trying to um, understand why a product is purchased in the first place and just do some reviewing do the analytics of that product. And then um, once you've got your Amazon Seller Central account, you can create shipments and you'd, you'd have to upload your, your products to your Amazon Seller Central account. You'd have to put onto Amazon what the price you want to sell it at. And Amazon have what they call the buy box. And um, I don't know how much you know about Amazon, um, but there's every listing that Amazon have on Amazon they have what they call the buy box to each listing. So when the listing loads, when you want to purchase something, there's like on the right hand side, it's like you can add to basket. Yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah. No, trust, trust me, I know, I know Amazon from the fact that we spend far too much per month on it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's, that's what they call the buy box. So what happens is you could have one particular product and on that product, you could have 10 different sellers on that product. But it's only the seller that has the buy box that's going to make that sale. Or it's like 90% of the time that that product is going to be sold by who has the buy box. So it's very, very important wow. for you to know that your margins, your, your price that you're selling at is going to match the buy box at least. Because if it doesn't match the buy box, you're not going to get that sale because people are going to go to 
uh, Amazon are going to show the lowest price, for example. Do you see what I'm saying? But there's a lot of education you've had to get yourself just to understand how the platform works. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, and, I can, and, and in terms of that must have been somewhat overwhelming in the beginning. It, it was. It was. I, there was no doubt. I didn't do anything else other than study and learn. <laughs> and I was just trying to work out, I was like, what is the buy box? What is the sales rank? What, what does Keeper do? You know, all these different tools yeah. that used to speed things up. And, and that's just the process of learning. You know, as, as, as you go along and as you start this journey, you, you just study and you just um, you, you start taking action on what you're, what you're learning and then you're going to get some feedback. So I was very like those, those first 12 months, if a product didn't sell, I was, I was looking at it and thinking, like, why didn't it sell? When did we purchase it? Looking back at the history, should we have purchased it? Should we not have purchased it? Because wow. I knew, I knew it's the great thing about online arbitrage. I knew I was going to develop a team around this through virtual assistants from the Philippines, India. Um, and I knew I had to teach this to other people. So I started to create like working procedures and standing operating procedures, like where I would show how to review a particular product, how to source a product, why we would purchase a product and why we would not purchase a product. So that 12 months, I was just like writing all these documents. I was just doing a lots of screen captures, just, just trying to understand why it works and how it works. And how big is your business today from where you've started? I mean, in terms of how you define that, it could be number of products, it could be anything like that. Uh, so the business today, we've we we're on the we're on course to be selling out ten, nearly ten million online through Amazon FBA. Um, we yeah we um, yeah, we're we've, talking two and a half years or three about three years pretty much, aren't we? From yeah, since two thousand and fifteen. Okay. Since two thousand and fifteen, we um, we basically we started from our living room. And now we've got a, a 2,000 square foot warehouse. We've got a, a, a team of virtual assistants. So I used to do everything. I used to source products, purchase products. Um, Kylie, my partner in this, she used to be the one that would do all the, the packaging and the, the prepping and shipping. But now we've got a, a warehouse team. We've got a virtual team that does everything for us. Um, and yeah, we've, we, we, it's just been a crazy journey. It's amazing. Unbelievable. And in terms of your life, then, how's that changed? I don't mean just the money side of it, whatever else. I mean, in terms of are you home with, with the family more, all that sort of thing? Yeah, well, the amazing thing is about this is I, I never had the intention to quit my job just for another job. And that's why I started to hire assistants in the first place. I wanted to um, I wanted to get more freedom. Obviously, that's what the whole idea was. I wanted to be able to go to um, school when my daughter was singing in a nursery classes and, and just have the option to do that because I never had the option with my son you see um so yeah life's changed massively now myself and Kylie we can have days off when we sort of want to have days off um although we still work incredibly hard obviously but it's um we have the ability to go out on holidays obviously um just the little things really uh, as small as when I used to work as an electrical engineer I used to have to go to work before the, the kids and the family got up and just to be around the house, so I'm in my office right now. I work from home now, you see. So I have a bit of flexibility to get the kids ready in the morning and um, get them ready for school. And if we want to go for a coffee in the morning, myself and Kylie can do that. So that's how life changed. Fantastic. That's, that's amazing. I mean, a lot of the, again, I, I talk about business scale up. I talk about leverage a lot. So you've mentioned a few things around how you're outsourcing. But ultimately, I also say that a lot of people, when they're, they're thinking about their business, they're not thinking necessarily about what they're really trying to create, which is usually, not always, but usually freedom to live life on their own terms, you know, to do what you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want. So it sounds like you've started to really crack that. What's the, what's the bigger vision then? What's, where, does this, where does this end up for you? What are you trying to create? Uh, well, I always thought that um, although I've got, although we've used Amazon FBA as, as leverage, as that stepping stone, uh, the one problem that I will say with Amazon FBA is you're relying on Amazon. You are, if they decide to suspend yes. you for whatever reason, if they decide to um, remove you as a seller, you, you would lose everything. 
And um, I, I actually experienced this. We, we experienced this in September of 2017. We were selling anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 pounds per day on Amazon. We had something like 11,000 units in stock at, at Amazon. Like in terms of the value of stock, getting towards, I don't know, 100,000 pounds worth of products at Amazon and Amazon suspended us. And the reason why they suspended us was we were selling a conditioner, like it was a, just a conditioner product, and it had an ingredient in that conditioner that was banned on Amazon. And, um, you know, that was a, a bit of a that was a bit of a hit to the stomach at that point. Um, and this is where the, the Tony Robbins comes in, the UPW comes in, because you're going to have adversity when you're on your journey. It's never going to be sail, you know, straight sailing. You, you're always going to, very you're going to have, very yeah, you're true. going to have moments where something happens, and that was a catastrophe for us in terms of we went from we had a warehouse, we had employees, we had a virtual team. Our sales went from every day selling a lot to zero overnight, just like that. And that was a a real that hit home to me that Amazon FB is fantastic, and I recommend it. And it's definitely something that people could leverage. But longer term, you've got to build something that you have control over. And that was when I um, I really started to think about, OK, what's my passions? I love to help people. I, that's why I started the YouTube channel. I started the brand, for example. And um, yeah, the bigger the bigger ambition is really to help people get started an online business, because I think online business is just an incredible opportunity at this point. Like we're living in a golden era. Like how amazing is it now? It still blows my mind a little bit that you could sell a product. I could be selling something right now to somebody who's in Spain or Italy or, you know, Amazon, are, they're, they're going worldwide. It's fantastic. Um, so we're living in a golden age to use online business, but there's many online businesses out there. You know, there is... Um, you could do information products. You can do affiliate marketing. You can do so many different things. And um, yeah, that's that's the bigger goal, really, just to help people get that freedom and be able to quit their jobs and be able to just live life on their own and terms. Do you really. offer do you offer training and mentoring for people who are trying to do this as part of your model? Of course, yes. I mean, um, a part of what what happened was when I started to share what I'd learned on the journey people started to ask more and more questions. Like naturally that's what they would do. And um, I started to, I got, I started to get a lot of people sort of asking me, well, how do I do this and how do I do that? And it then it just makes sense to make like some free training available. So I made some free training available and I started to just sort of create videos with tutorials and things. And then that turned into people wanting as uh, like having mentorship. And then it turned into well, create an online training program that people could go through. So it's sort of like evolved from that, but I never actually thought it would. Do you see what I mean? No, no, no. It's, it's funny. You start, it's similar to what I've done with my things. I mean, my my background was private equity turnarounds and scale-ups. So I was, you know, I was employed working for investment firms where usually the investment hadn't gone the way it should. And then since I've been doing this sort of stuff um, and just, I suppose, we'll talk a little bit about sort of brand, personal branding and things like that in a second. Um, I mean, it would be every single week I'll get 10 to 20 people contacting me wanting just to have a conversation. Now, I offer, I always have a conversation. I don't, it's not a, something I charge for. I just can jump on a phone with anybody because um, I enjoy doing it. It's part of how I contribute back. But what I found also is the amount of people that have sought my advice out to help them commercially, if you like, um, has tripled from that one action of, of, you know, wanting to give something back without any expectation. So I can I can see why it's happened for you because you've obviously had amazing success in what you're doing. The way you've described it, and you're probably a little bit of, um, immune to it now because you've been doing it for so long, but lots of people are trying to get to where you've got to. Not so much the money side of it, but just the, what sounds like the choices you've got. You know, yeah. you, you, you run your own life, don't you? I mean, obviously there's risk to that. You've mentioned one of those things with Amazon, but you know, you're not beholden to anybody other than how much effort and action you put into what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that I think that's a I I've always said, and and Kylie, um, she asked me a question the other day, and she says, well, what what's what's your goal? Like, what is it that you're actually working towards? And and exactly what you've just said there, I think for me, where I get the energy from is when 
if you could get somebody to like yesterday I had I had somebody message me and then give me a phone call just to thank me that they've made their first sale you know and it, it's just it, it's just a little milestone that gives them Amazing. that yeah it's just that that first significant milestone where it's like wow this is something possible you know he was like oh I'm at work but I had to just get out there I had this message saying that I've, I've got this first sale I've just made 50 pound like it's amazing and um, that's what really drives you on but as you just said the more you help people and the more you you put yourself out there you 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 you've got to you've got to put it in a way that is I, I don't want to say like um it, it's about trying to to reach as many people as you possibly can and that's what I love about podcasts. And that's what I love about uh, YouTube, just because, you know, you could create one tutorial, you could put it out on YouTube and you could have a thousand people watch that one tutorial and you can make a difference to people. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, we talked about this um, when we met, obviously, about some of the principles of growth and contribution and all that. And it's amazing once you understand how you can add value, how that just makes you feel different about things. You know, mm. and again, as we said, sort of the beginning, we started talking, you know, you have a different persona when you when you're around people, you know, because because you feel happier in yourself. And most people, I mean, I know plenty of people from the private equity days who have made millions and millions um, and they just hate themselves or they hate their environment or they hate other things because they're not doing it for the reasons which are going to actually make them feel like they're making a difference in the world. So it's almost like a whatever it is, a human, a human need, but it's something that you have to do. And once you understand that, it changes everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I think that's definitely, I can see that just from talking to you, Nick, and, and meeting you, um, that it, it's just an amazing thing when you can make a difference to somebody. And um, it's just a fantastic world that we're living in right now there's so it's one of those things where there's so much opportunity right now it's just the case of being focused and i think that's what i would say i would absolutely say the first 12 months of i don't have any youtube videos any content out there at all sharing what i was doing that first sort of 12 months just because i was so focused on not being distracted by another shiny objects that was an opportunity <laughs> yes. I was I was just like sort of like this is what I, I have to focus on and that's all I did and I didn't I didn't even tolerate any other opportunity I was like yeah that's a great opportunity but I'm working on this right now do you see what I mean yeah 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 well fo focus discipline all that sort of stuff mm. uh, one thing I want to, to finish off with today is because you've got a really interesting brand that you've created and we haven't spoken about that today so obviously it started with what you're doing with the arbitrage business, but just do you want to talk a little bit about your brand and why why it is what it is and what that means? It's probably a little bit towards your mission, I, I suppose, again as well. Yeah, so um, so my brand is is called Life Success Engineer, and um, I've always I've always loved engineering. The reason why I actually I didn't I didn't dislike electrical engineering. I just disliked the the life that you lived, like being at work all the time. But I actually genuinely love the the idea of engineering. And like for me, life success is different for everybody. My definition of life success is different from yours, Nick. But what the brand was all about, I just wanted to start sharing on how, you know, this goal that I have or this goal that you have, how you can split that up into actions that you could take. So I always talk about in part of my brand is like take massive action. You know, you've yeah. got to keep taking massive action on every single day because that compounds over time so the brand is all about online business with personal development because I, I do genuinely believe that the more I've invested in myself and the more I've focused on my own ability to set goals for example or just work on my productivity my morning rituals uh, my evening rituals all these different things that I've tried to incorporate in my life I just try to share as much as I possibly can so um that's pretty much what the goal is. So on my channel, on, on Life Success Engineer, the, the brand, um, I share everything from goal setting to awesome. planning to uh, working with virtual assistants, how you can leverage, because leverage is a big thing. Like there's no way that I would be able to do what I do now or you would most likely do what you do now with it wasn't for the people that you, you know, the team that you build around you. Yeah, indeed. No, massively so. And there, there's a whole... I'm going to do a whole podcast episode on leverage very soon. I haven't done it yet, but I've spoken around it because, you know,
you know, the way you've got access to people. I mean, it's interesting for me on that because there's so many people out there who have got, you know, different skills and different values to add. And, and everyone sort of, I've got this kind of big thing where people are starting to take much more control of their own careers, if you like now. So you've got access to specialists that are all sort of almost freelance. And that mm -hmm. world is going to continue. I, I, I sort of envisage a world in the next sort of five years or so where most people who are brave enough to do it. So firstly, you've got to, you know, step out of your comfort zone to do it. Are going to be, you know, operating off personal brands, strong networks, really st good understanding of what their skills are, because that world is is a much more enjoyable world to be in, you know, live your life. I, I totally agree. I, I think I think everybody has has skills. Everybody has things to share with the world. And um, there's somebody out there that's looking for the information that you will most likely have. Yeah. And if, if that is for you, if it's not for everybody, I understand that. But if you're interested now at this moment in time, sharing what you love to talk about or sharing some skills, if you're, if you're like me, for example, and I, I love to talk about leverage and taking massive action and yeah, all these yeah. things, just create a video on it. Just create create a podcast on doing what you love to do and it'll be amazing over time people start to engage with you people start to ask you questions and that is when you end up like wow i absolutely love to do this more than maybe the career that i'm in yeah absolutely and it does it does involve you know putting yourself out there and feeling comfortable with that and one of my mentors talks about the fact that, you know, you're going to have people who, who value what you're doing and, and, you know, agree with your opinions and you're going to have haters, as, as it's called. And, you know, I, you've got to have a strong um, psychology and state to be able to deal with that sometimes because, you know, no one likes not to be liked. It's, it's a sort of thing. But I think the way I sort of get around that, and I have some people that sort of say, you know, certainly feedback on the podcast that I didn't agree with that statement. But the mission behind what I'm doing, if you like, and, and the help that I'm giving to ma many, many more people um, makes anything that I hear in terms of criticism absolutely dealable. In fact, it gets to a point where you think, actually, you know, your mission becomes much stronger than any one individual's thoughts on those things. I couldn't agree. I, you know, I, I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. I think, well, you know, what, uh, just to add here, I think one of the things that um, for me, the one, one thing that I try to focus on every single day is if I could... If I was to do something for one person and that person gets value from that one person, I have to do it. Do you see what I mean? And at that point, no, no, then, I got it. I, it I, I, I live my life by that. And, yeah. And, and, and then if you, from a, I think, sorry, go on. No, I think it was a Zig Ziglar quote around that, which was about, you know, if you add enough value to people, you'll get everything you want in life. And that's not the reason necessarily to do it, but it's a, it's a nice belief system to have. It certainly motivates me. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if you if you could make a, a difference to that just one person, let's say you had five people in a room and four of them were haters. They did not like what you just said. But that one person did like what you said, then it's well worth doing it yep. because, you know, you've made a difference to that one person. Absolutely agree. OK, well, I'm conscious I've taken heaps of your time. Um, if, if if you think back over the last let's say it's now four or five years, I said, since you started doing this. And not so much about the arbitrage piece. I think there's so much stuff you've added today, Kev, in terms of what that is and how to do it. So I'm massively grateful for that. And I know everyone's going to go, what the hell did, what, what the hell was that? <laughs> I think everyone spends a lot of money on these, these things. Everyone spends money on Amazon or eBay, but no one's like leveraged it like commercially in the way you have. But if you go back on your, back to your entrepreneurial journey and you know, have, have a second to think about this if you need it. But what are the three things, if you think of the last four or five years, that have made the biggest difference to where you are today? Not just so much in business, because obviously that's successful, but in life. Wow, that's a fantastic question to end on here. Wow. I think um, the, the first thing, I think the first thing, I, and, and I think it's really important that everybody starts here, is... Getting clarity, be, becoming aware of how you want to live your life. And it doesn't have to be like perfect, that like you don't have to know it 100% clear as day, but you need to have an idea of the way you want to live your life. So for me, I used to think the definition of my success was being an engineer, being in a suit and tie, driving to work. But in reality, what actually is my definition of success is being able to take my kids to school. 
So I think when somebody becomes clear on that and wanting to know exactly what they how they want to live your life, that then naturally turns into, well, what vehicle am I going towards to be able to provide me that type of lifestyle? Because engineering was never going to give me that lifestyle. Online business was. So that's the first thing I would say. Um, the second thing I would say is you got to, you got to, fo- for me, what I try to focus on every day is the difference between the, the, the work that I'm doing. I always, I, I, one of the things that I try to share is I have like a, um, a planning system that I try to live by is whatever I'm doing, I ask myself the question, is it, is it me that has to be doing this? Or is there some, is, can I outsource it? Can I leverage it in some way? Because that's the way that you can grow. I call it my growth tasks. If I've focused on every day, some type of growth task in my life, in my business, then that's going to give me the biggest growth as I go along. And that's when you start talking along the lines of leverage, for example. Like the reason why I don't, the reason why I used virtual assistants was because I knew it's no, there's no point in me spending my time checking my Amazon Seller Central account for customer messages, customer feedback, and all these things, because I could have a I could have somebody else doing that and I could focus on a more leveraged thing, like a more leveraged task. Okay, so knowing the difference on what you're focusing on is really, really important. And then finally, what I would say is you can't do everything yourself. Like I am incredibly grateful for the team that I have around me right now and the energy that I have in my partner, Kylie, throughout the entire journey. You've got to you've got to you've got to build together. You know, I I think you've got to. and, And over time, I've brought in we've we've brought in friends you know, which has worked. And we've got a friend now who's a, a manager in our business. We've brought in um, a virtual assistants who we've, you know, spent time to develop because you can't do everything yourself. So I would definitely say um, those three. Awesome. That's a great answer, honestly. <laughs> and I put you on the spot there, didn't I? Um, I always finish uh, my podcast episodes by saying, be grateful, be brave, have faith and show up. And I've explained on one of the episodes, why I say that is actually something, I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you, I created it in the shower at Date with Destiny. Wow. <laughs> it's a story in its own right, but uh, there's, a, there's a thing you do at the end of Date with Destiny where you have to pull it all together and you've got your purpose and you've got your mission, but there's a bit where you, you do a, a technique where you kind of ground it in yourself, in your psychology. And um, Tony goes, make sure it's not too long because it's a painful exercise if it's too long. So literally in the shower, I came up with be grateful, be brave, have faith, show up. And it's a bit of a mantra, but the reason I bring it up is also the way you answered that question, you interweaved many of those kind of elements into, into your journey anyway. So, so I'm very grateful for that. And, um, and it's been great having you on the show, mate. Really, really good. No, honestly, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you, Nick. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just, I wish, I hope, that uh, people listening to this and watching this back has got some value from uh, from this. I think um, there is no doubt of that, Kev, no doubt whatsoever. <laughs> All right, thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick.